Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I had a quick interview with Frank Warren after Liam Williams' fight, but he talked for about three hours on, on BT that night, so I know you wanted to get off. Um, just a reflection on Liam's performance that night, obviously a quick night's work. Oh, he was unbelievable, wasn't he? He was uh, just was just vicious, stunning. I mean, he's a, he's a good finisher, and he's just looking so good at that weight, middleweight. I think he's... Um, I think he's a world champion in the, in waiting. And as uh, soon as we can get that fight on with Andrade, the better, because I genuinely believe he's got the beat of him. Well, let's get straight to the point. Of course, uh, Demetrius Andre has his uh, opponent announced yesterday. Uh, a lot of fans are criticising the opponent choice, etc. Liam wasn't very happy, of course. What is going on with uh, Andrade Williams? Because obviously Andrade's got a new date and fight now. Well, we're supposed to be in negotiations for the uh, world title fight. That's what the WBO ordered. So I'm waiting to hear back from the WBO. Um, and we want to get the fight on ASAP. That fight will have to take place or Andrade have to vacate one of the two. So um, Demetrius obviously has got his fight coming up. You believe that that fight will happen early next year and negotiations will start as soon as Andrade's fight is over? No, the negotiations start now. I don't know whether he's going to be allowed to have that fight. Okay. Have they, have they got on the way? Sorry? Have the negotiations got on the way already? Well, the, the WBO ordered that they take place. If we can't agree, then let's just get straight to the purse bids. Have the purse bids next week. Get it on. Let's get ready. Let's get moving. Okay. Okay. Frank, of course, um, everyone at the moment is talking about the fact that Tyson Fury will be back in London. He'll be back boxing in the UK. Um, the Ontario Wilder fight won't be happening. Let me quickly just ask you, though, about Shelley Finkel's comments. He's... Um, insisting this fight is still on. Why do you think he's saying this? Well, he's got his, you know, Shelley, who I know quite well, and I've known him for a number of years, he's, he's obviously got his opinion of where he's at with the contracts, and he's got to do the best for Deontay Wilder. Our job is to do the best we can for Tyson. We made it very clear that Tyson wants to fight this year. Uh, by the end of the year, that's always been our mantra, whether, whether it be uh, Deontay Wilder or it be somebody else. And the problem has been, that, um, because of the COVID, and various other things that the fight's not been able to take place. So we're in a position now where um, Tyson will fight, and we're looking at we're looking at the moment that'll be the fifth of December now in uh, in London at the Royal Albert Hall. That that's the intention, and we'll obviously uh, get that sorted out within the uh, I hope within the next uh, the next four or five days. Spoke to Bob a couple of days ago, and he said there's no contractual obligations for either man to fight each other. So this won't end up in a, in a court situation or, or legally if this Fury Wilder free fight doesn't happen, Frank? Um, that I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I, I, from what I've seen, that, the contract, that's how, it, that's how I see it as well, the same as Bob Arum. Having said that, Shelley's, they've taken their, they've taken an opinion, they've got a different view. But it won't stop Tyson from fighting, in, from fighting in December. Whatever happens, he will fight in December. I wish it was, you know, I'd like, you know, it, Tyson wasn't ducking out or anything, but, you know, for him, as he said, he put a statement out and he's been quite frustrated by it all, as all of us have. But him, more importantly, because he's the champion and he's the guy getting in the ring. And he made it very clear, you know, he's not prepared to wait any longer. Of course, we know uh, a factor in this will be the there's no gate for this and the last fight generated the highest ever gate in a Vegas fight for a heavyweight world title fight. Some people are suggesting, though, that Deontay Wilder's running scared, etc. You know fighters, Frank, you've been around Deontay. Do you, do you think that's the case, that Deontay just doesn't want this fight? No, I, 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 don't, um, I don't believe that would be... I don't believe he's running scared. I mean, I, I wouldn't. If I was him, I wouldn't have the fight because I think he needs to get back to the drawing board because, you know, having looked at the last couple of fights he's had with um, Tyson, I Tyson got, as I've made it very clear, got robbed the first time and the second time. It was an emphatic win. Um, who knows what he wants to do? That's his choice. You know, it's his choice where he wants to get in. You know, one thing about it, he's not, he's not, a, he's not a, 
you know, he, he wouldn't be scared of getting in the ring with anybody with Deontay Wilder. Um, look, we're in, we're in strange times and, and unfortunately events have, have overtaken everything. And uh, our, our, all the teams concerned, prime concern is Tyson. And that's all we, you know, that's what we've got to do. So make sure that he's okay and he will be fighting, as I said, in December. No doubt about that. Any movements on a potential opponent for Tyson on December 5th? No, we're looking at it. We're going to have, we're going to have, we've been talking about it the last few days and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work something out. Look, we're very restricted with what we can do because what it is, you know, it's, uh, as you mentioned, there's no fans at the Royal Albert Hall if, if that's where the fight takes place. Um, we just do the best we can to get Tyson busy. The objective is to set him up next year for the big one with AJ, providing AJ comes through his fight with uh, Poulin. That's the fight we all want. It's the one we all keep banging on about. And we want to get this bloody horrible year out of the way. Well, it was a, it was a horrible year after February when he won the world title. Since then, it's been, it's been awful for everybody. So we just want to set everything up for next year and hit the ground running. Still uh, surviving and breathing, Frank. No, that's the main thing, yeah? Sorry, mate? Still surviving and breathing. That's the main thing. Well, that's what we've got to do, isn't it? You know, it's bloody dangerous times for some. You know, it's awful, but we are and we're moving forward and I want to get this, you know, get this 5th of December show on. It's my, it's to celebrate my 40th year as a boxing border control license holder. I've done my first show in London on the 1st of December in 1980. We have a board license, um, and it was the place was nigh on empty. And it looks like we're going to be in the same position again forty years later. How life works, eh? Yeah, well, it's what it is, mate. But you got to get on with it. Got to keep moving forward. Absolutely. Actually, I was uh, with Anthony Yard yesterday, and uh, I told him that it would be your fortieth uh, year in boxing that weekend. The fact that he'd be fighting Lyndon Arthur, and obviously Fury would be headlining, and uh, he was a. Uh, very excited by by that. He said that's going to be a prestigious occasion at all our ball. Well, it's prestigious for me, for him, for him to be on the card. You know, Anthony, uh, you know how I think of Anthony. Uh, he's one of my, you know, he's one of my favourite fighters. He's been, uh, he's, he's been, it's phenomenal what he's done with a limited experience he had as an amateur and uh, I'd love him to be in action on there against Lyndon Arthur. Yeah, brilliant. But just just the last one on Fury, Frank. There's uh, been reports come out today from Michael Hunter. He's made a few comments saying he would fight Tyson for free. He wouldn't require a purse. Thoughts? Oh, I'd, I'd sort of rather see that than believe that. That'd be a, that'd be a first. That would be a first. Where are we at uh, with the November show, Frank? The announcement is that coming soon? Uh, yeah, we're gonna um, um, we're doing a, um, de- the rematch on the fourteenth with Denzel and uh, Mark Hanfran. So that that's that's on uh, cracking fight, and I'm hoping it's going to be for uh, for the uh, British title. That's what we're working for. Oh, brilliant! So I believe. Three shows you've got, right? That one, Dubois, Joyce, and the Fury Bill. Or we got one more coming before the end of the year? Maybe another one. Oh. Like to tease us, Frank. <laughs> I'm teasing you. No, there will there, uh, you know, we'd be another. We're, we're working on uh, what we're doing with, you know, with Carl, Carl Frampton. Oh, okay. okay. Just uh, saw some comments as well yesterday from Tony Bellew. He said, why not chuck Daniel Dubois in with Tyson Fury on December the 5th? He said, why not put Daniel Dubar in with Tyson Fury? Because he's contracted to fight already. And we've announced the fight. We, we, we contracted for it back, when was it? Back last February for, or January, whenever we announced it. It's been postponed enough times. He's, he's going to fight, he's gonna fight um, Joe, and that's a cracking fight. And that's one we all want to see. And like I said, the winner of that fight will set himself up, I hope, for the winner of... You get Tyson and AJ on, you set himself up for the winner of that down the road to end of next year. Definitely. Bit of a, a random one to end on. Um, we've seen a potentially Premier League matches might be going on pay-per-view, Frank. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, the, the reason that's happening is quite simple. That's for the clubs to get, to get revenue. That's nothing about the TV companies. And... I suppose for some of the clubs, certainly some of the smaller ones, it's a way of that you know, they need to generate some revenue. 
it's tough times out there. Tough times for everybody. The problem is, what's tough for the football the football football clubs and the smaller ones? Make it tough for the fans who have to fork out even more money to watch it on pay per view. Mm. You know, I'm quite sure that you know, we, you know, we're looking at where we're going with Tyson. We haven't made our mind up yet what that's going to be because it's, it's going to be a very expensive fight, and somehow we've got to make these things work in this very difficult scenario. You know, we've done our best we could to get, which we have got over the line with. Um, Daniel and Joe putting that out to the subscribers on BT. Um, but it, it, these are tough times. They're tough, tough times. And I think, you know, I don't like seeing every single match being on pay-per-view. Who wants to do that? Who's going to be out of fault to see that? Especially when everybody was so sport for choice um, towards the, well, for, for, for quite a while now, being able to watch out every, more or less every match. But if they do do that, then... Uh, uh, it's going to be interesting times because I'm sure that the likes of their sponsors and so forth won't be happy that they'll be limiting their audience. Um, but, look, you know, at the end of the day, it's always going to be down to the fans because they're the ones who are going to vote with their cash, whether that's going to work or not. It's as simple as that. Interesting what you said there, that the December 5th bill <coughs> might not be on pay-per-view because it's Tyson Fury... I think fans. No, I did. No, I'm saying we. You know, it, it, it's look. It's the world heavyweight title. It's the WBC heavyweight title. You know, we've got to generate income to make it work. We had no gate income whatsoever, so you can pretty much be sure that it will be pay per view. Oh, okay, I thought you said that you're still making. No, that. sorry, I you made. My, that's my main mis, 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 uh, misrepresented what I was saying there. No worries. Yeah, I think that's to be expected. A, a Fury or Joshua fight is going to be on pay per view. Of course, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where we are, I think, on that, mate. But as I say, we're still working on it, and uh, we'll get this all official soon. And uh, we've got to get, you know, we've got lots, still lots to do. But whatever happens, there will be a show on the fifth of December, and it will be a, there'll be some, there'll be some good fights on it, some cracking fights on it. Of course, uh, Bob this weekend's got Lomachenko Lopez on. That's not on pay per view in America, which is a, is a big move. You're looking forward to the fight, Frank? Brilliant fight. Oh, I am. It's a cracker, isn't it? It's a really good fight. <clears throat> um, as you know, I'm a massive fan and have been since his amateur days of Lomachenko. But he's got a tough fight. You know, new kid on block, mm. a lot of youth. But I fancy Lomachenko to win the fight. But I'll tell you what, if he gets beat by Lopez, that's going to be a big statement by him. To beat, you know, for me, probably the best fighter out there in Lomachenko. See what happens this weekend. Frank Warren, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV, as always. A pleasure, mate. As always, you stay safe and well, and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon, Omar. Definitely, Frank. Take care. Cheers, my old son. All the best. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.